So today let's talk about the Burson Conductor 3 DAC preamp and headphone amp. It's a 3-in-1 unit. Now I spent a lot of time thinking how should I talk about this uh, Conductor 3? And the reason is because if I talk about how it sounds like you know, the fact that it's very transparent, very detailed, it doesn't really tell you much because a lot of DACs today can do it. In fact, one of the issues I have right now is that recently I got my hands on three incredible DACs, the Topping D90, SMSL M400, as well as the Guster X26. After plugging into my system for half an hour, I can tell you right away, the landscape of entry-level DAC has changed forever. Even high-end DACs has changed forever. These DACs has raised the performance of DACs to impossible heights. And eventually I'll make a video on them. And this got me thinking, so I'm sure a lot of you will put in the comment section asking me, why don't I just get one of those DACs since they're so well reviewed and they're so amazing. And me telling you this person is very transparent, very detailed, really doesn't do much. So instead, I, uh, I spend a bit of time thinking about it and I'll give you the reasons why you should choose this Burson DAC over those in this video based on my experience. And once again, for me, there's no such thing as the best DAC, but it's always a question of is it the right DAC for you? So we're going to address this in today's video. So a while ago, Adorama reached out to me asking if I'll be interested in reviewing this Burson Conductor 3. And I said no in the beginning. I don't have a headphone at my home and what am I going to do with a headphone amp? Turns out it's more than a headphone amp. And what really got me interested is the fact that it uses op amps. And I've never had a high-end DAC that uses op amps. And so that's why I said yes, send it to me. So after three years, finally I got my first sponsor. And uh, Adorama is sponsoring this video. They gave me uh, a coupon code for this product. And uh, I'll put it in the description next to the non-affiliated link later on. Now, for those of you who don't know, they've been selling Hi-Fi gear for a few years now. They don't just sell camera gear. And after the video, go find something for me to review. Now, the last time I asked that, a lot of you chose the Yamaha AS1200. But unfortunately, they're not allowed to ship Yamaha products outside US. So I can't review that unit. Choose something else, maybe a Focal speaker. Anyway, make sure you go check it out after this video. So I'm gonna quickly put up the specs here on screen. And there are a few things that caught my attention. Well, first, it uses two ESS Sabre 9038 DAC chip. The second thing that caught my attention is the fact that it uses op amps. Burson actually has been selling op amps for, uh, for a while now. And in this unit, it actually comes with four. And it's their top of the line Vivid model. Now, I know they spent about three years developing this unit and it supports uh, even DSD 512. So I'm gonna start with what I don't like about this unit. The manual sucks. Oh my goodness. You see, remember I said that you can change op amps? So I decided, okay, you know what? It comes with an extra set. And I said, I'm gonna change it just to hear the difference. Check out the manual and it gives me no instruction. So I just say, okay, fine. I just put it in, power up this, the DAC. And next thing you know, I blew the op amps. After that, I paid close attention to the, the chips. And that's where I realized, oh, there's actually orientation. And then I went on the website. On the website, they talk about that. You know, incorrect placement of the op amp can blow your, can permanently destroy your chip. I'm like, really? You think so? Couldn't you just put an extra sentence in your manual to tell me that? Oh my goodness. The next thing, there's no information on their filters. There's so many filters I can choose from. I mean, if you look at it, if you see a fast filter and a slow filter, who's going to choose the slow filter? It would be nice if they have something in the manual. In the manual, there's a link somewhere talking a bit about the filters. But the problem is you need a PhD in engineering to understand whatever is written on that page. So, of course, I know some of you will say, Thomas, just change the filters and listen. Dude, I don't have a lot of time when I test gear. I wish they would have told me like they did on their website. You see, on the website, if you go check out, let's say, their op amps, there's actually different graphs to show 
the strength and weakness of each op amp. For example, if you compare the Vivid and the Classic, here I'm going to put on screen the two graphs. So I wish they did that for the filters. So that's my big complaint. Second, it uses USB-C and I can't use my fancy vibranium USB cable and I have to use a, a $1 USB cable I found somewhere. So that's my second complaint. Last, it gets a bit warm. It's not really a complaint. Not that you can fry an egg on it, but it does get a bit warm. Um, I guess it's a good thing because it's designed that way to dissipate heat. It has a class A um, headphone amp in it, so I can understand why it gets warm. So those are the few things that make me go like, you know, I wish they did better. Now, what I like about it, it's beautiful. That aluminum body is designed to dissipate heat. So I guess it doesn't get hot, it gets warm just because of the way they designed it, which is great. I like the fact it looks really cool. It has a very nice looking remote, artsy, elegant. Also, I like the menu. It's easy to navigate, it's intuitive. You can place it vertically and then you can press one button and it changes the display in front. The other thing I really like are the labels. They're intuitive. I look at it, I don't even have to look at the manual and I can under, I can guess what it is. Now, for example, if you look at the back here, I'll show you two, output, and one is for DAC and one is for variable output. For me, it was like, yeah, it's kind of really obvious. I was able to navigate and use the unit without even looking at the manual. So let's move on to the three main reasons why you should consider this unit. First, it is a headphone amp. So for those of you who are shopping for a headphone amp, this is perfect. Now it's unfortunate that I can't test it because I don't have any headphones at home. So I'm gonna skip this part. Uh, just keep in mind, it is class A, 7.5 watt. And from what I read, the headphone section alone is worth you taking a look at this unit. I just like the fact that it has two headphone jack. So it's great for us audiophiles who love to do A-B tests. So let's move on to the second reason why you should consider this unit. It has a very good DAC. Now, remember at the beginning of the video, I mentioned about these uh, DACs, SMSL M400, Topping D90, and so forth. Now, for me, those DACs are cut from the same cloth. Good luck in passing a blind AV test with those three DACs. They sound similar. I consider them, as I was telling my friend, uh, Mr. Kanta, I call him Mr. Kanta because he owns, used to own a pair of Kanta, is that those are the focals of DAC. Very transparent, very detailed, very clear, fast, and blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing now, not everybody wants that. For me, those are what I call analytical DAC. Now, analytical is not a bad word. For example, focal for me is analytical. So, but I love focal. Analytical and sterile, now that's a bad word. And I'm not saying that they are. What I'm saying is that they have their own sound characteristic. The person is more musical. Now, let me explain by what I mean by that. Person does, does not sound like those tags. When I lend it to my friend, whom I'll call Mr. Vintage, because he owns a lot of vintage gear, the words he used to describe this conductor three are like euphonic, tubish sounding, romantic, and so forth. So clearly it is a different kind of sound. And what I noticed with this conductor three is that it is rounder on the top end, smoother. Some would call it more analog sounding. It's not harsh at all. And I think that is the main key difference. Now, that's not to say that it's not transparent. It is absolutely transparent, detail, it's fast, bass is strong, great for low volume listening. Presentation is a little bit forward. The mid-range is a little bit lean, but clean. It has good decay. And I think the most important above all is the fact that it does sparkle really well, but yet it is not harsh. So overall, it has all the strength of what I look for in a good deck. And the fact that it is a little bit rounder on top makes it different when comparing to those other DAC. Now, here's the second thing that's great about it is the fact that it uses op amps. So if you go on their website, if you check, let's say their Vivid model versus their classic model, they put this two graph to show the difference. Now, this is important because, you know, as audiophile, we change gear as often as we change clothes. Well, some of us. So imagine one day you buy this monitor audio, like the speaker I have here right now, and you find it a little bit bright. 
So one thing you can do is maybe change the op amps. Look for one that's less transparent. Or in the future, person decides to bring out this new op amp that gives you 10, 10, 10, 10 performance everywhere. You can upgrade and change it to the new op amp. So therefore, there's a lot of advantage using op amps. It's too bad I burned it. So I can't tell you what's the difference swapping between op amps. Maybe in the future. So the last reason why you should consider this unit is because it is a proper preamp. Now, let me explain. Preamp for me has to have analog input. You know those DAC with volume control? There's no analog input. So if you want to add a turntable, you're out of luck. Another thing I noticed, over the years I've owned a lot of DACs, expensive to budget, all kind. And one thing I noticed with DACs is that they don't always work well when you connect it directly to a power amp. Maybe I'll tell you a story. A Macintosh D150. Now this DAC is about what, 5,000, 4,000? And you would expect it to be fantastic if you use it as a preamp. So one day I decided to sell the Macintosh D150. And I remember I set it up, connected directly to the moon because I was lazy to put a preamp in the system. And I listen to it, I'm like, oh man, yeah, it has that roughness. You see, when the matching is not that good, it doesn't sound as smooth. And that's what I found with a lot of these DAC when I connect it directly to a power amp. Now, unless you have a chance to really A-B test it, you might not pick it up. So that's why in my mind, I'm like, ah, nobody's gonna pick that up, man. It's because I got a chance to A-B test, so I picked it up. Guess what? The person showed up, he picked it up. Oh my goodness. Fortunately, he was somebody who understands Synergy, so he still ended up buying it. And ever since that day, I stopped being lazy. The Burson Conductor 3 works really well, even if you plug it directly to a power amp. So I had it plugged to the Moon W5.3, I had it plugged to the Lumen power amp, my friend Mr. Cantor plugged it directly to the Macintosh MC302, and my other friend Mr. Vintage plugged it to an ATI power amp. So what we notice once we remove the two preamp, because all three of us has have two preamps, is that we lose the airiness, we lose the holographic sound stage that tubes bring to a system. But besides that, everything else is still preserved. So that's why I say, okay, so it actually works well with any power amp that we connected to. And you know, I was actually wondering that because later on when I went to check on the Macintosh D150, I noticed the output impedance on it is really high. 600 ohms at with XLR and 300 ohms with RCA. And this person is 100 ohms output impedance. So maybe that's why it matches easier with a lot of the power amps I tried. One power amp that surprised me a lot was the XTZ Edge $500 power amp. I remember that day I was trying with a very expensive power amp, the Conductor 3. And for fun, I said, you know what, I'm just going to plug it to the XTZ, XTZ Edge, thinking that the performance is going to dip significantly. But turns out the synergy was so good, I was like blown away. I'm like, wow, this is this sounds amazing. In fact, I even messaged my friend Mr. Cantor saying, for some people, this can be end game solution, man. It's that good. In fact, after that, I brought it up to my room, paired with my PMC DB1 Gold, and it sounds really good. So that's the second reason why you should consider this unit, because as a DAC preamp, I find it, it pairs pretty good with a lot of the power amps I tried. All right, so I guess I'll wrap it up at this point. One thing I try to do in my videos is constantly remind my audience that there's different solution for different people. There's no such thing as the best, the best DAC, the best power amp doesn't exist. It all depends on your taste. And I'm gonna back it up with one story. Man, I have a lot of stories to tell. So um, a while ago, I posted a video, JBL L300. It was a room tour video uh, where I visited Tony's place. And I remember I had a conversation with Tony about his system and why he uses Macintosh gear in the system. And he told me at one point, he had these Bryston amps and he didn't like it because he felt that it was too tight and too fast. So that's why he went with Macintosh. Because when he listened to jazz, it kind of destroyed the atmosphere. It just doesn't sound as relaxed. And you know, in my mind, I was thinking, 
when I talk about speakers, right, I, I always go like, man, it's so fast, it's so tight, it's so detailed. But you know what? Not all of us want that. And if you meet as many audio files as I do, you'll quickly realize that everyone values different things. So for me, the Conductor 3 is not extremely detailed, extremely analytical. It's not that. It's more balanced. And as I mentioned, there are a lot of filters on it. You can fine tune the sound. And above all, you can change the op amps you know, to change the sound characteristic. For me, if you're somebody who is looking for headphone amps and you want to drive also a pair of speakers on your desk, this is definitely something you should consider. Because I used it on my desk, I'm like, oh man, the only thing I'm missing is the headphone. And if you're somebody who wants to use it just for the DAC and uh, preamp, because you don't want to deal with tubes, for example, or you don't want to put an, another preamp in the chain, then this is also something you can consider because the DAC and the preamp section alone is pretty strong. With that said, I hope that uh, today's video gave you something to think about. And don't forget to go check out Adorama. Find something for me to review. And if you're thinking about buying this unit, go research on it. Go look at the other reviews and then come back and use the coupon code. Save yourself 200 bucks. All right, guys. See you next time. Thank <laughs> you.